The Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference is coming to Dallas, Texas, February 16, 17, and 18 in 2018. If you know of a better way to get the latest insider knowledge about crypto, to hear directly from the top minds in this field, to interact personally with 800 fellow crypto lovers, hodlers, investors, miners, traders, developers, and founders, then I'd like to hear about it. If you don't, then you don't want to miss out. Register today for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference. Go to BitcoinSuperConference.com and register today as a super early bird to get the lowest rates on tickets and hotel rooms. That's BitcoinSuperConference.com. Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used or just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with Future Tech Podcast. Um, my guest today is Tyler Wagner, the uh, founder and head of Authors Unite, and their service helps authors become bestsellers on Amazon and Kindle and places like that. Tyler, how you doing? Doing awesome, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. So, um, you know, I never describe what companies do as as well as the uh, founders do. So, tell me, you know, tell the listeners more about Authors Unite. What, where did the concept come from, and you know, a little bit about your background. Yeah, definitely. So about four years ago, I launched my first book and, and it hit bestseller. And that was shortly after I dropped out of uh, college. So it surprised, you know, a lot of people in my network because they kind of thought I was going down a, a bad path when I dropped out. So when I then, you know, hit bestseller like six months after that, um, it got a lot of attention in my network. So people uh, started asking me like how I did it. And it just turns out uh, or turned out that a lot of people I uh, also had a passion to become an author uh, for multiple reasons. So I, I realized that, and, and then I helped a bunch of other people do it for free to build up uh, testimonials and stuff, and then I just created an entire business out of helping people become authors. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. What was the book that you you wrote that got to bestseller status? Uh, it's called Conference Crushing. So it's about uh, how to maximize your ROI at networking events. Hmm. Okay. And um, how long ago was that, and how many books have you written up till now? So that was, I think it was like three and a half, four years ago about, and I have around 12 books, I'm going to guess. So some of them, I have like four legitimate books, and then I'd say like eight mm -hmm. like short Kindle books um, that are more for like lead generation. So, I, I, you know, they're like very, very short, so I, I don't really consider them. Uh, you know, very legitimate books, but we also do uh, this thing where we bring a hundred authors together. So kind of like your book where you have like 200 different uh, interviews in it. Um, mm -hmm. We do this book called the better business book where a hundred authors each share their best business lesson. Uh, and we're just finishing up our third one. So uh, that's also a pretty cool book as well. Yeah. It has to because, you know, it's like tattoos. Once you get one, you want to do more and more. So I figured you written, you had written a bunch of books. Yeah, um, it it is like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> and in uh, in full disclosure, just for listeners, if anyone cares, uh, you know, it's like the old uh, hair club for men guys said. You know, I'm not only uh, I not only promote this, but I'm also a client. So I'm also a client of uh, Authors Unite. They help promote my uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and blockchain book. So it's not the reason we're on the call. The reason is to help listeners, you know, with uh, services like this. But just in full disclosure, uh, you know, just letting people know. So. All right. Well, so Tyler, take, take me through your process now that you've been honing it for a while. Um, what can you do for authors? And, you know, do you help them create the book or do you just help them promote the book? You know, step me through your offer. Yeah, definitely. So we offer like literally everything a publishing company would offer, like editing, uh, ghostwriting, all those types of services. And, and those are more custom. But what we focus on, and, and it's mostly for like scalability reasons, uh, is two main p packages, and they're done for you. So we publish people's book for them, and, and that includes a paperback and Kindle, and like ISBN, the copyright, just you know everything. Once the final draft is done, we just have a full package for that. 
And then our other package, uh, which is what we worked on together, uh, is our book launch package where we take care of the entire book launch uh, for somebody. So and that includes about 15 different marketing avenues, uh, just to name a few. Like uh, we'll do Facebook ads, Amazon advertising. Uh, we'll reach out to publications to try to get you featured in mainstream media or like more like niche blogs. Um, and, you know, those are just a few. And essentially the goal is to hit bestseller and then to also maintain that momentum and actually, um, you know, build an audience with the book and, and you know, get book sales. So um, that's how it works. And to hit bestseller, essentially, you know, you take all these different marketing avenues and you have them all hit on one day. And that's how, you know, you saw with your book, uh, Richard, um, we had did um, – most of those uh, marketing things, some of them are after, like the Amazon ads actually come after the launch um, for us, right. how we do it. But uh, all those come together. And then for you, I think the total was almost 12,000. It was like 11,000 something downloads, I believe. Yeah, right. So, and it comes from all that. And then when you get that many downloads in one day, and, and this is what all the best are. They're all the same except New York Times is only for print copies. So it's not like digital downloads. Um, but for Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and Amazon, it can be digital downloads. And when you get that amount in one day, the algorithm takes over and it just shoots you up to number one. So that's how, um, you know, we got you to number one in like four different categories, I believe. Yeah, no, it was great. And I really appreciate it. Um, you know, what's so, you know, we got the bestseller status. What's the next step typically with people and, you know, where do they go from there? So it depends on, on their goals. So I know, you know, like with you, like you have your conference and you have the podcast. So like on the business side, like, you know, you already got it, you know, pretty much kicking. Like you have a full team from, from what I've seen. Um, so we're focusing on for you to do Amazon ads to like find you a profitable Amazon ad that once we're done working together, you can just simply scale um, and have your team take over. So that's what we're going to be doing the next month for you. Uh, with some of our other clients, uh, like if they didn't already have, like it seems to me that you have like a full full team and like a conference and, and everything going, right. um, we would build them like a sales funnel. So we use click funnels because a lot of people aren't, they're not really looking even for book sales. Like a lot of people don't care about that. They more use the book for uh, authority. And then off the back end of the book, they have a consulting practice or, or a coaching business or something like that is pretty typical. So we'll build them a funnel and then run Facebook ads for them um, through the funnel to try to get them more clients. Gotcha. Okay. And what are you seeing is makes your clients the happiest? You know, what's the, what kind of promotion are you doing where they're like, wow, I can't believe you did this. And you know, like any sample results you can share. Yes. Yeah, so, so I'd say the best seller is really the biggest thing. So like one of our clients, um, we got her best seller in front of the alchemist, um, which, you know, uh, is like one of the biggest books in the world. So like she was pretty shocked. Um, shocked by that and then um yeah it really depends like on what their goals are so that's why I always like before working with someone like I just break down like is your goal to sell books is your goal to just hit bestseller is your goal to grow your business with clients um cuz definitely and I'm sure you know as as you might know like where you're going to make a lot more money typically is not off direct book sales but it's going to be off using that book as authority and then getting clients um, for whatever your business is off the back end. So I'd say from a financial standpoint, most of our clients are happiest um, with the results in their business they get from that bestseller authority. Um, and, and yeah, hopefully that, that answers the question. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask because <clears throat> I'm sure some people think that they'll make a lot of money from book sales, but you know, I've seen and I'm sure you've seen that the real money is in uh, being able to be an authority and to attract clients. Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, some of our clients, like, it, it can happen. Like, with your book, like, we're going to try out these Amazon ads. Like, from what we've been seeing and testing, Amazon ads have worked the best because you can literally pay, you know, like, 10 cents a click. Whereas, you know, I see a lot of people trying to sell books with Facebook ads, and that's pretty difficult due to the fact that, you know, you're going to pay, like, $1 a click, right? And maybe even more as you know, Facebook gets more and more expensive. And your, you know, most Kindle books are anywhere from, like, three ninety nine to nine ninety nine. So it's a pretty tight margin mm -hmm. there. But with Amazon ads, if you're only paying $0.10 cents a click, um, and, you know, with Bitcoin, it's, you know, obviously very, uh, very big right now, I think we could very possibly find you 
uh, a very profitable Amazon ad campaign that you could scale and actually start to make a, a good amount of money from your book. Yeah, you mentioned, um, you know, we've talked about this Kindle versus the physical part of Amazon um, versus maybe even Audible. <clears throat> you know, I, I chose to put my book on all three, Audible, Kindle, and Amazon physical. Um, what have you seen is the biggest driver of book sales and of credibility? Is it by having it on all three? Is it Kindle better than physical? You know, what do you see? Yeah, so biggest driver of sales so far for us is Kindle. And I think as more and more people go audio, I think it could change to audio. If you if you can, I would just do all three. As far as like the best seller goes, like, you know, we hit it for you on Kindle. And if you hit it on any of them, you know, you can still call yourself a best seller. So from that perspective, I don't think it matters which on which direction it happens or which um, format, if you will, paperback or audiobook um, or the Kindle. Um, but yeah, as far as sales, we see most in Kindle. And but I do think over the next couple of years, it could turn to more audio because I know I can say for myself, like I don't even really read Kindle books and paperback. Like it has to be something I'm really into. And I normally buy a paperback. Funny enough after I've actually listened to something on audiobook and I'm like, whoa, I actually want to like see this and like analyze it. Um, and that's when I'll make a paperback purchase. So, um, yeah. And I think you've probably seen this with like podcast results too, you know, like a lot of people and for the past few years they have like podcasts are growing rapidly because it's just easier. Like when you're out on a walk or running, you, so I think we'll see the same type of trend with audio books. Makes sense. Okay. And what, um, <clears throat> areas do you publish people in? Is there any areas you won't do or you don't have success in or it doesn't matter? So we do them all, but I'm always like very upfront with people. So we have the most success in nonfiction and like self-help. So I'd say like we've done this for over 300 people uh, personally now, and it's probably about 75% of our clients are nonfiction or self-help. And then like 25% are fiction and children's books. And for the fiction and children's books, it's mostly like it's a passion project for them. And so I, I just let them know that up front because it's a lot easier or harder to sell like a pleasure than it is a pain point. So what I mean by that is with fiction and children's books, you know, that's something people are purchasing for like a pleasurable activity. Whereas, for instance, like your book, it's on Bitcoin and like somebody has like this pain point where, you know, they want to get into cryptocurrency, they don't know where to start, or they want to learn more about the blockchain, they don't know a good place to go. And obviously, your book is a fantastic place to do that. So it's easy to target, you know, your audience and be like, hey, you know, this is your one stop shop, you know, this is over 200 people, uh, insider advice. Um, and that's just a lot easier. So, um, so yeah, that, that's kind of our demographic. Okay. And then you mentioned um, other services, uh, you know, the, where do you find people have the stumbling block? Do you have more people coming to you that want to write a book but just can't get to do it? Or is it that they've written one and it's collecting dust and they want to promote it? Or what, you know, where are your people coming from? Uh, I'd say it's split. Like I'd say most it's, it's either one of these two things. So first it's they have a book idea and they just have no idea how to start and they really need accountability because for most people like a book is a side project and especially your first book like there's a lot of fears that come along with it so one thing we offer is like book coaching so we'll have like uh one of my employees will do like weekly calls with the person uh until and like you know it's like coaching them through the process and it's also i think the biggest part of it is just accountability like if you tell somebody like, hey, I'm going to write 5,000 words this week, and you have a set call with them every week, and then you don't do it, like, you don't want to tell somebody, you don't want to let people down. So, you know, some people will come to us in that direction where they just, you know, they can't finish it. And then the second half uh, that come to us is they've already actually launched their book, and they've just not seen the results they were hoping for. And then, excuse me, then we'll actually relaunch it. Um, for them and make any changes uh, that we deem necessary. Oh, that's good. So even if someone's launched a book, it's not too late. You can always take it and breathe new life into it and make it a bestseller again. Yeah, exactly. We, we just uh, you know take it down and we'll just republish it. Because a lot of times, too, 
and you know, maybe it's a little biased, but like I think we do really good book covers, and like your your book cover turned out great. You didn't even use us for it, but a lot of people's book cover. Um, when they come to us, I'm like, okay, well, that's the first problem. You know, <laughs> like I think we need to get a good book mm-hmm. cover first. So we'll take it down, republish it, and then we'll relaunch it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, you know, I with physical books, I, I'm sure everyone's the same way. It's sad. Yeah, I have books in my house, and, you know, I want to read them. But if I go to the bookstore and I see a new one, I'll, I want to buy that and take it home, and I'm more likely to read it. And a couple of times, embarrassingly, I, I've, I've bought a book that I have already. You know, but just because I saw it as quote unquote new in the store, I wanted it. I, I'm sure everyone does that. <laughs> I'm the same way, man. Like when I uh, when I go into a Barnes and Noble, like I usually leave with a book or two because I I like the mm-hmm. feeling of it more. My only thing is it's just like traveling with it and and stuff like that. So that's why like my Audible account is just wrapped up. Like I I, I don't even know how many hundreds of Audible books I have. Mine too, yeah, and you can listen to them faster and all that good stuff. So yeah, that's what cool. I like. Yeah, people think I'm crazy. I put it on double the speed, and they're like, I don't even know how you're like obtaining that information. I'm like, I don't know, dude, but I, I am. I can hear it, and I'm taking notes. <laughs> so. Well, double for me, that's, I mean, I know we're getting into the weeds. I can do like 1.3, but double is like, that's tough. Yeah, yeah I guess you got to work <laughs> up to that. Yeah, dude, yeah. I do 1.5 or, or double. It, it depends. Uh, on on what it is, because yeah, I mean, you can definitely miss some stuff on double. One point five is kind of the sweet spot for me. But I, I actually didn't know, oh. like you can you can do one point three. I've only seen one point two five and then one point five. Can you actually customize they, it? They added yeah, they added more gradations now. You can go like point oh five increments. So oh pretty cool, wow, yeah. okay, that's all. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. That's awesome. So um, any um, I don't know any any particular book launches that come to mind that really were like constructive to you or surprising or just it, it was craziness any case studies you have that you thought would be interesting for people to hear yeah sure so i guess um uh, two two come to mind i mean the first one that i already mentioned was getting in front of the alchemist so again when you can mm. work those algorithms like that's that's just what was crazy so we got her in front of the alchemist and now she's done two more books after that So, like, her second book that she launched, uh, it's called The Spiritual Journey of Entrepreneurship, and we put that one more in business categories, and we got her, it's called, like, One, I think, by Peter Thiel. It's one of the big business. Yeah, we got her in front of that, and then we got her in front of the Lean Startup. So, it's just, yeah, like, these these crazy big books, and um, and then with her third book, we got her in front of the four-hour work week. So, it's like... When you can time your launch right and you put it in the right category, um, it's just pretty crazy, the re- results. So I'd say that's the first one. And wow. um, another one is called Social Wealth uh, by a guy named Jason True. And we did his, like when I actually first started the business, this was back like 2014. And we launched his, and since then, like three, almost four years later, um, he's sold over 45,000 copies of it. And this is Kindle and print um, combined. And so that's, you know, a lot of copies. And, you know, he just took, after we launched it, he took what we taught him um, with uh, Facebook ads and Amazon ads and everything else with marketing and just ran with it. And he's just yeah. been crushing it. So that was also surprising. That's that's a lot of copies and stuff. So. Very cool. Yeah, uh, another question I have. Um, I don't know if this happens for books, but I've seen on Amazon it says Amazon's Choice, and it will sometimes show bestseller or top seller. Um, are you able to work with the algorithm to get people to where their book says, you know, Amazon's pick or it says uh, top seller? Um, so Amazon's Choice, I think it's pretty new. I have to actually look more into how that works. And yeah, I'm just I'm not as uh, educated on to like answer it fully because it's like different. They like changed it where it's like bestseller is now different than like top choice. They have both now, and I don't even know if it's available for books. But um, well, I guess here's an easier question. So when you get people bestseller status, will they get that little label next to their book, or is that like a different part of the algorithm or something? Um, it can be right. So there's both sides. So there's the free side, and then there's the paid side. So what I always say to people, and it, it just depends. Like if somebody already has like a huge audience, then I always recommend like we just do like a 99 cent discount. 
and then we can get mm. you number one on the paid side, and then that little sticker will will pop up. But if you don't have like a huge audience, okay. I think like the main goal isn't to sell books; it's more to just get in front of like people in general. Like you know, you could get that bestseller sticker in ninety nine cents by selling like let's say like 700 copies at 99 cents, like that could be achieved. Or you can go to the free side and hit the bestseller and get like 11,000 plus downloads like yourself on the free side. And to me, it just comes down to like, what's more valuable, like, you know, 700 downloads at 99 cents or 11,000 downloads free, especially when, you know, Amazon takes, when you have 99 cents, they take 70% instead of 30. It's like swapped. So you only get like, 300 bucks of that so i always you know go with the free side because i think more people is more valuable okay um last couple of questions so you know when you talk to authors what are some of their biggest reservations about doing this and you know what are your answers to them uh time, i'd say t- kind of the typical ones with any business like time or money so the first thing is time and you know especially you know if they haven't even started their book so like you know a lot of people that come to us if they haven't started their book, then, you know, a lot of people are just like, I don't know if I'm going to have the time to finish it. And I always tell people like, you know, you could do one hour a day uh, and, you know, get, you know, typically a person can write a thousand words in an hour. So after a month, you know, 30,000 words, and that's already like a pretty decent sized book. So, you know, just break it up in an hour a day and a month or two and, and there you go so i'd say time is one and then money is another one just because like most of the time the money you invest in your book you probably not for a while are not going to get in return just from book royalties it's going to be that authority play with your business so if they don't have like a business idea or like a business set up already um that can be a reservation as well because they're like hey you know i'm going to pay you this many thousands of dollars to promote the book and hit bestseller, but I might not make that back in book royalties for like six months or even, you know, a year and a half it could be. Um, So I'd say that's another reservation. Okay. All right. And then, um, you know, I guess the last question or two. So how can people get in touch with you, you know, authors that want to uh, promote their book and become bestsellers, you know, get more clients because of their book and use it as an authority piece. How do they get in touch with you? Uh, yeah, they can just go to authorsunite.com, and uh, when they go there, they can apply uh, to be to have us publish and launch their book. And if they get accepted, then you know it's potential we could work together. Okay, very good. Uh, so it's authorsunite.com, right? Yep. All right, great, Tyler. Well, I, I appreciate your time. You know, I know that you're uh, a little bit under the weather today. My voice is raspy, but we <laughs> did it. So thank you for coming on yeah. the podcast. Of course, man. I enjoy it. Thanks. The Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference is coming to Dallas, Texas, February 16, 17, and 18 in 2018. If you know of a better way to get the latest insider knowledge about crypto, to hear directly from the top minds in this field, to interact personally with 800 fellow crypto lovers, hodlers, investors, miners, traders, developers, and founders, then I'd like to hear about it. If you don't, then you don't want to miss out. Register today for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference. Go to BitcoinSuperConference.com and register today as a super early bird to get the lowest rates on tickets and hotel rooms. That's BitcoinSuperConference.com. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post a review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.